Hello everyone, happy 2018. I'm out here this afternoon in minus 15 degrees Celsius in the woods. Just giving you an update on my channel. I'm gonna be adding something to it. It's gonna be called a random act of knowledge. So I'm gonna to try to throw a video segment out there randomly about a topic that I think is informative that may help you out. Today's topic is going to be using your smartphone as a GPS even when you don't have cell phone service. A lot of people don't know that the GPS function still works in their phone. They just need to download maps and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Some of the apps that I use are Gaia GPS, Google, and Avenza Maps. They're available in iOS as well as Android. And something to keep in mind, this is not meant as a full tutorial on how to use those apps, just to give you an idea that they're available, something to think about if you don't already know. Also keep in mind, you still need to carry a personal locator beacon on you or a GPS capable of satellite communication to call for help if you need that. So hopefully you find this informative. Hopefully you're enjoying my channel. Subscribe if you already haven't, and please hit that like button if you like this video. It's much appreciated. So here we go. Okay, the first app I want to show you is Gaia GPS. We'll open it up. We'll zoom, zoom out, and you can see some of the waypoints that I have saved. We'll zoom in on some of these, and we'll go over here to Killarney Provincial Park. You can see where it says number three on that waypoint. That just says that uh, as you zoom in, there's three waypoints in that area. Zoom in here and I'll touch this waypoint. And it says the crack. And this was a hike that me and my family did a couple years back. Push on the information button and up it comes. So that's the waypoint, all the information you need. A little picture of my lovely family and me on top of the crack in Killarney Provincial Park. So that's the waypoint. You can add notes to it and also guide me. You can click on this and from where you are, it'll guide you to that waypoint. As far as downloading the maps goes, we'll X out of this. So you click on layers and you can see all the different maps you can have, you can pull up. So down at the bottom, there's download maps and my maps. So if I wanna download a map, click on that and the blue circles on the corners of the uh, rectangle, you can guide that anywhere you want and then you can save that, you can hit save and you'll download that section of the map. And depending on the size of the rectangle, the file will be bigger or smaller depending on how much area you want to download. So having said that, if I zoom out, you can see the maps that I've already downloaded. So I've actually overlapped in some areas. You can see the darker rectangle near the two in the bigger section. So I've downloaded those areas on my map. We'll go over to Algonquin Park. And those are some of the maps that I've downloaded in Algonquin Park. Okay, the uh, pink line here, that is actually a track. I'm just gonna cancel the save maps. So that purple line is uh, the water taxi on Opiongo. So when we hopped on the water taxi, I just uh, activated the breadcrumb option and obviously it'll keep track of where you go. So that's the route of the water taxi dropping us off at the Pru Lake Portage. That was uh, last year's um, trout fishing trip. And you can hit my maps. And these are all the maps that I've already downloaded. Um, Lake Lavaille, you wanna look at it? This is what I've downloaded here. So you can hit load and main map, click on the main map and this is Lake Lavier. So there's no cell service anywhere near there. And I was off the grid the entire trip. These are all my waypoints. Again, the waypoints are great. You can click on it. That's where my son Griff caught his first trout ever. Zoom out of there. Crow Bay. This was one of our uh, campsites. Third night campsite on Lake Lavier. So pretty slick. And that is Gaia GPS. Now Google Maps does the same thing. So open up Google Maps. Pretty much Algonquin Park. And this is what comes up with uh, when you have a cell service. But we're gonna go to offline maps. So if you want to create a map, there you go. So you can download that section. You can make it smaller or bigger, and it tells you the size of the file. So you zoom in, the file's gonna be bigger. 
obviously if you want all of Algonquin Park the file is going to be pretty big it's one and a half gigs right there okay it tells you if you want to download that map you download that map and you go to Algonquin Park you don't need cell service you'll be able to get around and the phone your phone will tell you where you are anywhere in the map in the park now I find Google doesn't have as many options as Gaia Google is kind of a do-it-all sort of GPS uh, map app whereas guy is more geared to hiking but having said that um, I'll show you my maps on Google so my on my places and I've used this for my bike packing trip on the Colt so for example day four we were off the grid in uh, some sections of this trip and there you go and this is what I use for that and it's nice to be able to store all my all my locations Okay, so Google and Gaia um, pretty much do the same thing. It's a matter of preference. I, I use both. If I'm in Algonquin Park or on a trip, um, I do prefer Gaia. I do like um, using that. And Avenza Maps is pretty much the same thing. And uh, I've, I've used Avenza Maps just because I like checking them out. Um, Avenza Maps, you can download Jeff's Maps, and you should always have... Uh, a map and a compass with you you shouldn't rely on this but you'll find that uh, if you use Gaia or Google or Avenza um, you'll never get lost or disoriented in the park they're a great help